So, Mohammed, tell me, what exactly is mental health? So, with our physical health, we're checking in with our bodies, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, with our mental health, we're not just checking in with our bodies. We're also checking in with our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors. And that's an important way to think about it. When we hear mental health, we often think about specific mental illnesses like depression, schizophrenia, or bipolar disorder. Those are really just patterns of negative mental health symptoms. But mental health is about so much more than just mental illness. While some of us will be diagnosed with a mental illness in our lifetimes, all of us have mental health. An estimated 7.4 million Canadians will experience a mental health problem or illness this year. That means one in five of us. So chances are we will all experience a mental health challenge or struggle at some point in our lives. Based on our genetics, some of us are born more likely to struggle with our mental health if it runs in the family. Not to mention other biological factors such as substance abuse or brain injury. These can also have an impact on our mental health. Our environment can impact us as well. These are things that can happen in our homes and our schools. So say, for example, if someone's bullied in school um, or has a rough home life, this can also impact our mental health. Outside of that, think of the larger communities you're a part of. We can often see stigma and shame surrounding mental health in many different ways. When I was struggling with my mental health, stigma and shame made me feel weak. Additionally, as a man, society tells us that we can't talk about our mental health or talk about our feelings, and that also negatively impacted me. Lastly, we need to think about our society even more broadly. Let's consider the isms and the phobias. Someone who has had to deal with racism, transphobia, or homophobia their entire life may be more likely to struggle with their mental health than somebody else. On top of that, when these types of discrimination are reflected in how society cares for people, this can also cause folks to struggle with their mental health. For example, in some predominantly Indigenous rural areas, many families don't have access to healthcare services that are culturally appropriate or clean drinking water. On top of the discrimination that they face, these realities are huge factors in shaping the mental health of these communities. Of course, it's important to note that we are all different and how these factors impact us will change. Exactly. Our mental health is not black or white. You're talking about the mental health spectrum. Mental health can range from a positive, optimal state to stressed, to struggling, to crisis where we need serious support. And this can change on a regular basis. Let's say I have an exam coming up. I might be really stressed, but as soon as that exam's done, I'm feeling a lot better. And similar to mental health, mental illness isn't black and white either. Illnesses can range too, specifically in their severity. It's important to recognize that when we consider them both together, someone can have a severe mental illness and optimal mental health as long as they're taking care of themselves. It also means we can have no diagnosable mental illness and still really struggle with our mental health. So my mental health is always gonna be changing mm -hmm. and so is yours. But what's important is that we recognize what these changes look like so we can just take better care of ourselves. Absolutely, and that we continue having such important conversations like we did today. It's so important to keep talking to our friends, our family, and our loved ones about our mental health.